hi guys and welcome back to my channel structured sleeves are a thin now and in this video i'll be sharing with you guys how you can make a structured sleeve using crinoline so this structured sleeve is inspired by the one and only vicky james so here's the one that i made so before we get into the video i want to urge you if you are not subscribed to the channel yet please make sure you hit the subscribe button and without further ado let's jump right in so I'll be working with this blue satin fabric and my fabric is on a fold and on a fold the total length of the fabric is 20 inches. So the width of the fabric is two and a half inches. The half an inch is the same allowance. So the next thing you need is your cranial line. So I have two of them here and the total length is 36 inches which is a yard. I'll be working with this two cranial line because a single cranial line is not strong enough. So the width of my crino line is 2 inches, that is why my fabric is also 2 and half inches. So to make the crino line stronger, I placed one over the other like this. So the next thing I did was to sew them together starting from one edge till I got to the other edge. Once I was done, I flipped it to the other side and did the same thing. So the trick to making your crino line stronger is to add to it. You can make it three layers or you can make it four layers. So I'm done and you can see that the crino line is stronger than before. The next thing I'll be doing is to iron this interfacing onto the wrong side of my fabric. So I'm going to open it up this way and go ahead and iron it. So I'm done with the ironing. And the interfacing I use is called cloth gum. So I just folded the fabric into two like this. And I'm just going ahead to sew it together by the half an inch seam allowance that I added. Remember that I said my fabric was two and a half inches. So after sewing, what I should have left is two inches, which is the same as my crinoline. line. So I'm just going ahead to trim off the excess seam allowance by the side so that when I flip the fabric right side out, I do not have excess bulk on the inside then the next thing i did was to flip the fabric right side out this will be a time consuming process for you so just take your time and make sure you do it right normally i would skip this process but i just decided to leave it here so that you guys can see how long it took me to get the fabric right side out so on that note if you're new to this channel my name is phoebe please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't because Trust me, my videos are very interesting and you really do not want to miss any of my new videos. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. So once the whole fabric was out, the next thing I did was to move the seam line to come towards the center like this. I'm going to be taking this to my pressing iron and I'll make sure to give the back side like this a good press. So I'm done pressing it. You can see how relaxed it is. And the seam line is on the center. So to give the crino line more structure, I'm going to be making use of my red line boning. So I just placed it right here and I went ahead to sew the red line boning on the part that can be sewn onto the crino line. So when I got to the edge, I just trimmed off the excess there. And you can see that the boning stopped at this point. It didn't get to the end. So I flipped the crino line to the other side and sewed the red line boning onto the crino line. So now that I'm done with the first part, I also placed the boning again on this part of the crino line. Then I just went ahead to sew it onto the crino line like this. So a red line boning has two sewable parts. So once I was done sewing on the first side, I just went ahead to also sew the second part of the boning onto the crino line. After sewing the boning onto the crino line, you can see that the crino line is now standing. So now to finish off the raw edges right here, I have this piece of fabric that I cut. So I'm just going to place it on this part like this and I'm just going ahead to sew it onto the crino line. After I was done with that edge, I'll also do the same thing here. So I also cut out a piece of my fabric. And I'm just going ahead to finish off the raw edges at this point. Once you're done, this is what the crino line should look like. The next step is to insert the crino line into the fabric. 
so i'm just taking my time to gently fit the crino line into my fabric and i'm going to do this all the way till the crino line is fully inside the fabric At this point, the crino line was fully inside the fabric, so this is the starting point. So I just placed it at this point where the crino line ends, so I just went ahead to trim off the excess fabric like this. The reason why I stopped the crino line here is so that I can easily attach this part to wherever I want. So all that is left is to iron the sleeve so that it relaxes well, so I'll go ahead and do that. After ironing, this is what the sleeve looks like. You can see how it is standing without me even holding it on the second slide. And that's all I have for you guys in this video. I will see you all in my next video.